but you're a Canva partner, correct? I'm a Canva verified expert. Verified expert. AI has really changed the landscape and a lot of the stuff that was highlighted in Canva Create was all kind of utilizing this AI to, to bring to life their magic. They have Magic Eraser, which lets you highlight and remove something. Like if you've ever had an event photo and there's somebody in the background photo bombing that you want to get rid of, you can do it now and you can highlight them and the, through AI, it's going to remove them and it's going to understand how to fill it in. So it looks like they were never there. Wow. You're listening to the Venue RX podcast. What's going on, everyone? Jonathan here with the Venue RX. And on this channel, we are passionate about documenting and sharing best practices around owning, operating, and managing world class wedding venues. And we give, uh, put out so much content on this channel around not only venues, but uh, wedding industry info as well. And this is going to be one of those episodes that you're going to want to buckle up, maybe take notes maybe even open Canva <laughs> on your computer. Uh, we're gonna be talking about Canva today and uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this topic. Before we jump into it though, if you are a new listener uh, or new watcher on this channel, viewer on this channel, thank you so much for being here. If you are returning, please consider subscribing if you haven't already and uh, maybe pass this along to a friend who, who you think might enjoy the show. All right, let's jump into it. I am so excited today to welcome uh, Brenda who's a Canva. You're a Canva partner, correct? I'm a Canva verified expert. Um, verified the, the, expert. the title has kind of gone through a few iterations, but it's essentially, I think there's about 44 of us at this point uh, across the world. And we were essentially handpicked by Canva's community managers to, you know, for our role in educating and teaching and spreading the good word about Canva. Amazing. Amazing. Well, welcome to the show. I'm, I'm so excited. We're doing this. We actually, so just a bit of context for everyone who's listening or watching. <laughs> we actually, <laughs> we recorded this or we started recording this two days ago and yeah. Brenda got on and was like, there is a, like, do we want to do this now? Cause there's this massive release happening. And by the time you listen to this, if you use Canva, you'll know about the release. So we decided to wait so that we could actually talk to you about all of the really exciting new things that were just announced in the launch. So um, Brenda, before, just really quick, before we get into that, how did you end up as a, uh, just like working in Canva? Uh, how did you end up, you know, serving the wedding and events community? Like, could you give me a little bit of background on, on yourself and then we'll just jump into, um, you know, what, what Canva's done on this, on their platform? Sure, absolutely. So I have been an entrepreneur for a little over 23 years now. The majority of that was spent running a website development company. And for a good number of years, I really focused a lot on websites and website marketing for the wedding industry specifically. I had a very good friend who was a, a wedding cinematographer, and she had kind of pulled me into that world and started referring a lot of wedding industry professionals to me. And I found that I really loved working in that space and just spent a good number of years just really focused on helping wedding industry professionals get better websites and understand how to make the most of the websites that they already had. But it was a few years ago, about four, gosh, four years ago, I guess, I was looking at creating a course about websites. I signed up for a program to teach me, you know, the ins and outs of doing that because I'd done it in the past, but not very well. And what I found is as soon as I got into that program, all the other students in it were asking questions about Canva. They wanted to know how to create their lead magnets. They wanted to create checklists and workbooks and their course slides and, and all of these things. And I had been using Canva since 2014, so I was fairly adept at it. Started answering some questions, filmed a couple of quick tutorials for them, and they started asking if my course was going to be about Canva. And that's one of those fork in the road moments where you... you, you, you Things changed so dramatically in that moment as soon as I started realizing that this is what they wanted to learn. They didn't, website security is important, but they weren't asking to learn about that. This, they were ready to line up and pay me for my expertise. So that was that moment that I just switched it in 2019. And I ended up actually retiring my website company this past September. So I'm 100% in on the Canva and uh, digital filing organization kind of side of things now. Long-winded way of getting there, but <laughs> yeah, it's been the journey. Well, and why, why websites, why marketing? Like, do you have a passion for design? Is that something you studied in college? Like, how did that 
kind of, I know that's even taking it back to more meta place, right? But like. What's interesting is I'm somebody who run ran a website development company and I'm not a website developer. So you don't probably meet too many of those. Um, my expertise has always been in administration and organization and project management, but I really loved the online space. We were probably the first on our block to get the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, we were definitely the first to get computers. So I've always had a love of this. My dad was, he very early on could see that this was going to be a really pivotal thing to learn how to master. So he gave us a lot of opportunities. And I don't know if it was the early exposure or if I just always was going to be drawn to that. But I guess I just kind of fell in love with the power of the internet as a communication tool, started dabbling with website design when I was, I guess, in my late teens, early 20s. And we're going way, way too far back now. Um, but I wanted to work in the space, but I knew it's not something that I wanted to go and actually get the skill set to do. Mm -hmm. So I hired people to do that, or I worked with people who could do that, and then I would manage the projects. That's, that's incredible. That's, I mean, that's entrepreneurship right there, right? You know, you, you may not, <clears throat> you may not be, you know, an expert at the specific material, but you know how to organize it. You know how to put things together. Like that's, that's incredible. Let's talk Canva. Um, this, this event was called Canva create, and they were announcing a bunch of new, uh, features but I mean, that's really saying it very lightly. Why don't you explain like what, what this event was, what it meant to the Canva community, and really maybe even you want to start with like how impactful is this going to be for wedding and event pros, folks who regularly use Canva? It's going to be impactful for anybody who's using it if they if they want it to be. The basics that were there before, and it really it was more than basics, but all the foundational stuff that you've probably already gotten comfortable using, it's all still there. But it's been kind of up leveled, but also there's all this new functionality that's been introduced. AI has really changed the landscape. And a lot of the stuff that was highlighted in Canva Create was all kind of utilizing this AI to to bring to life their magic suite. So they've got they're calling it a what are they calling it? See, it's all new to me still. Uh, it's magic in the work suite, basic basically. So you've got things like uh, Magic Write, which they pushed out late last year, but they now have it available across all of the design types. So before it was only available in in uh, docs, now you can have it in any design. They have Magic Eraser, which lets you highlight and remove something. Like if you've ever had a vacation photo or a, an event photo and there's somebody in the background photobombing that you want to get rid of, you can do it now and you can highlight them and the, through AI, it's going to remove them and it's going to understand how to fill it in. So it looks like they were never there. Wow. You can also, the next level of that is um, if you want to erase something, but you want to put something else in it. Let's say you have a picture where you have one kind of decor in the background and you want to swap it out for holiday decor, highlight it all. Tell Canva, you know, what kind of, you know, that you want to put Christmas decorations in the background and it'll swap it out and it'll put Christmas decorations in its place. It's incredible. It's jaw dropping when I saw this in action. We had a debriefing earlier this month um, to see what was coming just so we kind of knew what to prepare for. And I'm under an NDA with uh, Canva, which is why when we were going to originally talk a couple of days ago, I'm like, you asked me, is there anything you can't talk about that you don't want me to ask about? And it was that moment that I'm like, there's a lot that I can't talk about. <laughs> so we might want to put a pin in this, come back to it later. But watching it for the first time in that debrief, I, I was like, I, it, it looks, it, and sometimes you would think that you could do that. It might look kind of rough or not quite natural. It's surprising how good it is. They have magic, uh, magic presentation. Now you can tell it, give it a few words, give it more than five words about what you want to create a presentation about. And it outlines it, the whole thing for you. I tried earlier today how to market your wedding venue and it outlined a presentation. It gave suggested content. For, now the design was a little bit meh and it needed some work for sure, but it broke it down in suggestions of how to market your venue. It, it's incredible. So I think it's something people are really going to be excited about. And um, I think it's going to, 
change how a lot of people are creating content and uh, maybe they'll start using it in ways that they never even thought to use it in the first place, if that makes sense. It's it's very exciting to see what's possible. I am terrified and excited in equal measure about the power of AI. So <laughs> I was actually just going to ask you, what <clears throat> what's your take on AI? I mean, AI to me feels like it's raising the base level of everything because now you can quickly, just like you said, you can quickly create a kind of a basic how to market your wedding venue. Like, so if you couldn't, and I'm not that design oriented, right? I've got team members who do it, such a great job of, of using Canva, but this would, something like that, I imagine would help me up level my own kind of base level of using the tool. And so now maybe the base level of what everyone's able to do now rises to whatever the level of yeah. the, the basic package AI gives. What, what's your take on it? I think it can definitely give you a leg up, but I think it's still going to be incredibly important to understand some of the fundamentals. Like if you don't have a brand kit set up in Canva, if you are not understanding how to, uh, if you have one set up, how to apply it to customized templates, how to choose templates that actually are on brand for your business. If you're not making choices to be consistent with your branding, I think that it's a great tool, but you need to understand it's still a tool. You need to understand how to focus it and how to use it effectively. But I think it's going to just give a lot more creativity, a lot more flexibility than we've had before. They also have something called magic design, which is essentially what magic presentations is kind of a, a version of, but you'll be able to upload an image and it'll help you try to narrow down which templates would work best with it. Um, you know, it's, it's trying to automate some of the things that maybe have been taking more time than we than most folks have wanted to spend on it. So I think that that's really valuable. But I think that you're still going to be spending time in Canva. Hopefully, you're just spending it on the right things and using it to create content that's actually going to support your business and not spending tons and tons of time researching templates to to figure out which one you want to move ahead with. I think there, it's very tempting to still go down that ca Canva rabbit hole when every venue owner is going to have a lot of other things that they should be spending their time on, not you know dabbling in design. So totally. Well, and help me understand the practicality of what what like. Let's walk through that together. You have an image, maybe you have an image of a couple, you know, uh, saying their vows, or maybe they're just, you know, there's a beautiful landscape or something around them, and it's a photo that you want to use um, for. What does this? What does this? You know, uh, magic design tool help you do? Does it help you actually create like a like a good Instagram post or like a better format for the background? And like, it, actually, give me some practical applications for this. It could. Um... In, in full transparency, since a lot of this is so new and just been rolled out to my account as well, I'm I'm still learning about the ins and outs of it and how to best use it. But, you know, you it could help you narrow down what kind of template would work well for you. So you're not choosing something, for example, that's really dark and bold and moody when you have a, uh, a look and feel, an aesthetic to your business is light and airy and, and uh, is not going to work with a design like that. There's so many templates now in Canva, which is amazing. It gives you so much flexibility, but I think it can be very, very overwhelming for a lot of people who are going in there, trying to find something, trying to get in, find something, create their content and get out so they can get back to the business of running their business. And this is one of those tools that's going to help you kind of, you know, take an image that you want to use narrow down, not give you a lot of stuff that maybe is not a good fit. And then give you a starting point so that you can then go in and apply your, you know, use some of their tools to apply your brand kit. There are options to automatically apply your brand kit. And, you know, that way, customizing a template so that it looks on brand for you. But again, sometimes the AI works really well. Sometimes it applies your branding in a way that looks not so good. <laughs> and you need to be able to be in a position to understand what works well for your business and what doesn't so that you can customize it if you need to. So it'll be really interesting. It's still learning. It's still early. It's going to sometimes give you really great results. And sometimes it's going to give you results that are very, you know, not up to the bar of what you would like to put out there. And it's the onus is going to be on us as the business owners to make decisions about whether what it's given us is going to work for us or if we need to try something different. Uh, absolutely. You know, before you mentioned websites, and I know you kind of come from that 
that background, Canva does have a website builder inside of it. Is that correct? They do. Uh, it <clears throat> isn't a replacement for a more robust website platform. Okay. If you're and looking to do, I mean, if you're looking to do like a single page, like a presentation to somebody or a, just a one pager that doesn't really need any functionality, then you probably could get away with it. But if you're wanting to integrate, you know, list building, if you're wanting to integrate something like MailChimp or ConvertKit into your website, if you want to have email forms, if you want to be able to do search engine optimization and put analytics on your website and all these things, you're not going to be able to do that. So I'm still a, a really strong advocate for focus on the tool that's going to do the work best that needs to be done. This is a great option for some people, but I don't think it's the right fit for most people to use for their business website. Yeah. And I, and I wanted to get your take on that because I know you come from that, that website background. So I was like, yeah. how does it stack up? But that's really good clarity. Speaking though of, of how incredible it is and kind of the right tool for the right job, I know anyone who's really into the design space probably has been juggling Canva and an Adobe product, maybe Photoshop, Illustrator, some of the, the Adobe suite, right? Yep. Um, there, one of the questions actually directly from, from my team after seeing the create presentation was, you know, they're still using Photoshop and Illustrator to scale uh, the image file sizes, you know, to either a high resolution or a lower resolution, depending on what the need is. Um, or editing any of the vector files. And I'm wondering, is this something that is either capable, or that Canva is either currently capable of, or do you see happening? Because the feedback that they were like is, hey, that's the only thing that I'm using Adobe for. <laughs> I'd love to cancel that subscription and move fully over to Canva. What, what do you see as kind of options for that, that functionality? I think that, again, like you said, right, right tool, you know, right use, right tool. It's there are still places that I think Photoshop and Illustrator are going to win out. Um, there are certain kinds of design uh, effects that are just not possible in Canva yet. Often folks have asked, can I put, you know, uh, a gold metallic finish over text uh, in Canva? No, you can't do that at this point. There are ways to create that sort of effect, sort of, but not to customize it the way a lot of people are looking for. So there are specific kinds of uses um, that, Canva is not capable of doing yet, but I think if yesterday's event showed anything, it's that they are leaping ahead uh, dramatically with each of these season openers. So they tend to do, I think, two of these a year. So in about six months, we'll probably see another, you know, release or maybe not as significant as this one. But I think each year we're going to see big moves forward about the functionality that is possible. One of the things that came out that had a lot of people going to Photoshop rather than Canva in the past was the ability to have layers. And that's one of the things that rolled out yesterday is now you have layers in Canva. So if you have a design where you have a whole lot of different uh, elements on it that are stacked on top of each other in the past, if you wanted to get to something down in the background, it was really hard to, you had to kind of break your design in order to get to that item. You don't have to now. They've added layers so that you can just move things around from a little layer stack. So that's we're increasingly seeing more and more of these Photoshop-like capabilities being introduced in the platform. For some folks, they're not going to be able to get let go of Photoshop for a while. Mm -hmm. But I think we're incrementally getting to the, to the point that it's it's not the go-to choice for as many people as it used to be. Uh, absolutely, and I think that's how our team has seen it. Like it's been increasingly there's more functionality but it is fairly straightforward because any of the adobe suite you know kind of requires some knowledge of the platform you know you have to really there's a learning curve there and canva i think there's less of a learning curve to get to something that like you said allows someone to deliver to kind of get to where they want with their marketing collateral a lot quicker and get back to running their business i want to talk about that for go ahead yeah i was going to say that I think there's a learning curve on there's a learning curve on both. I, I have spoken to people who feel completely overwhelmed by Canva as well. 
I would say the learning curve is definitely steeper on Photoshop. And I think one of the big differences is that Canva has really sought to be a tool that can be used by non-designers. And to that end, they really are focusing on providing a lot of templated sort of solutions that you can start with and you just have to customize as as opposed to starting from scratch. And I think there's a lot of designers think I think that's the big divide. A lot of designers are still going to want to use the original tools and a lot of people who are not designers but want to create great looking design content are going to go this route instead. Hmm. I'm I'm curious with with Canva for anyone who's not actively using it right now and maybe even some people who are they've just used it for like one or two things here but they don't really understand the true power the true kind of functionality of the app. Could you give a rundown for everyone of just some of the the frequently used ways that you've seen specifically wedding industry pros use Canva in their businesses, whether that's for Instagram, social media, but like run me through like what are some common applications that you see using people using Canva for? There's so many. (laughs) There's so many. Um, I think Obviously, it started as a platform for creating social media content, and that's initially where a lot of people still go to is they they think of it as the place to go to create something for Instagram. And absolutely, it is. But it's not just the Instagram feed anymore. If you want to create reels, you can on there. If you want to create a video to use in your business, it's not a video editing platform by any stretch, but it's increasingly adding more capabilities into it to be able to create small videos. So you can create that in it. You can create checklists, workbooks. Uh, you can create you know, guides, client onboarding guides. If you have a presentation that you're giving to a potential couple that you want to work with, you could create an online presentation that you can share with them and it can have animation in it. And if you need to change something in it, it's not like you've sent them a PDF slide deck where you now have to send them a new one. You can just change it on the live version that they have a link to. There's, I would say... If there is some sort of touch point with your client, whether it is a printed piece or a uh, a social media piece or something you're sending by email, if there's a marketing touch point, you probably can use Canva for it. So I would encourage people to look beyond social media as a use for it because there's a lot of other capabilities. I have done as well. I've, I've uh, printed custom branded welcome kits that I used to send when I had <clears throat> excuse me, a larger program. So they, they'd get a branded card. They get this little insert card. I'd send a little gift with it. And it was just a little extra surprise and delight because they weren't expecting that. And they certainly weren't expecting getting something that was fully branded for whatever program it was that they had signed up for. And Canva does offer printing. It's Is it the best source for printing large format kinds of things? No, it's not. But if you are looking to do postcards, greeting cards, um, swag, even I've got multiple hoodies <laughs> that have Canva, uh, Canva branding on them. Um, it has really opened up in terms of the, the s- scope of usage that you can use this for. So even just sitting down and figuring out, okay, what would be something fun to give here that would be branded? You probably can create in Canva and there's probably already a template there that you can start with. Wow. Yeah, that's this is so timely. It's funny. We're we're on the board behind here. I was talking with one of my ops team and we were talking about the reason to return. And people don't often think about returning like a wedding or event venue, you know, unless it's like a baby shower or a birthday party or something like that. You know, for a wedding, you know, you're hoping you're only doing it once. So <laughs> there may not be a return component there that's typically considered. But if you think about you know, the ways that your guests, your clients can use your event space, there's a possibility of reactivation. And so it sounds like we can really use Canva and Canva tools to create, like you said, bits of swag, a little postcard, something cool and creative that can be that memento that maybe you send home with them or you write them at their one year anniversary that does have logo, you know, that has your logo on it, that has uh, maybe some imagery from your your property. And it sounds like that can all be done in Canva, correct? Yep. To, to, for the most part, I mean, there are, there are always limitations, but for the most part, I've been able to create anything that I've needed to. I mean, cost is always a factor in terms of what you're wanting to print, but particularly if there's something you want to create that's digitally um, presented that you, you know, if you wanted to send them on a, 
the one year anniversary create uh, you could have a template for um couples that you have kind of a recap of their ceremony and their time at the venue or something like that create a, a an online little video or presentation repurpose that just update it customize it for each couple it would be easy to do it would feel very personal but it wouldn't take that much time and it's delivered online so there's no hard cost associated with it either that's huge that's huge that's such a cool little bit of I guess advice, it's a tool, it's a hack almost to like create that better client experience. Yeah. I'm curious about pricing, Canva pricing. You know, what, what does it cost to start? Uh, is it expensive, is it cheap? I know that's kind of uh, subjective depending on, you know, what, what you consider expensive or cheap, but what is your, um, what's, what's, what's Canva pricing? Kind of give us a rundown. So. I'm in Canada, so I see Canadian pricing. Um, that's going to be, a, but my to my recollection, I think the U.S. pricing is still about 109 a year if you go annually, something around that, or around $13 a month monthly. Don't hold me to that. Uh, they haven't done a price increase, and I actually got asked yesterday, are they going to be increasing the cost with everything they're launching at? Uh, oh, right. Not to my knowledge. <laughs> Again, don't hold me to that, but I have not heard anything about that. Most people that I speak to in business would agree that it is, for the price point, it has the most value they are spending in their business for their expenses. So it is a, it literally is only the, a couple costs, a, a couple coffees a month, but the power behind it is incredible. And I think that with anything, I don't, even if it's $10 a month, even if it's $100 a month or $300 a month, if I'm not getting value from it, I don't want to be spending money on it. So I do think it's important to understand the differences between the free subscription and the pro subscription, which is a paid offer. They offer both. If you're not sure whether or not you need to go on the paid version, start on the free, see how far you can get. And you will run into situations where the pro features really are necessary in order to create what you want to create or to do it as efficiently as you want to do it. And Canva will notify you. They'll give you a little notification if you try to access something that is a paid only feature. But one of the perks is uh, of being a Canva expert is that I get to give a 45 day free trial. And a lot of folks take me up on that because they want to try it from themselves. They want to see, you know, is the brand kit really all that in a bag of chips? Do I really want to use this going forward? Give it a, tr a trial. If you don't like it, you cancel the account before you're billed a single dime. And right. then if you decide in the future you want to upgrade, what you created while you were on Pro is still there waiting for you. That's that's incredible. That's such fair pricing, I think. Like you said, a couple cups of coffee, yeah. two two cups of coffee if you're drinking Starbucks. <laughs> you know, like it's it's my lattes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, it it really is they've they want it to be affordable. And that I think is also one little leg up that Canva has over Photoshop as well right now. Absolutely. Yeah, that's feedback that that I've gotten from my team and just seeing like as we're looking at software expense for our company like do we want to spend a bunch of money for the the Adobe suite? That that brings me to uh, my next question that I'm that I'm curious about. The typical user of Canva might be just an individual, right? Someone who's logging on maybe for a free account, like you said, maybe contacting you for that 45 free trial, which the 45 days, I mean, that's a long trial. That's that's like a month and a half. Yeah, Canva themselves only give 30 days, so huh. which is still a decent trial. It's, a, yeah. it's enough time to determine if this is something you want to stick with or not. And then at the end, like I said, it's only like $13 a month. So it's not like you're going to get a huge bill, even if you forget to cancel the trial. Yeah. Um, so normal people, you know, I say normal people, maybe let's say your average <laughs> planner, your coordinator, yeah. your DJ, even a caterer, maybe who's putting together menus or something like that, or maybe it's a venue yeah. who's putting together their pricing, a package information, all of that. Um, that you know, is, is more of kind of like the sole user. What about for businesses who maybe have multiple team members, just like, just like how we use it. Um, what's the functionality around maybe a central account with a bunch of different like related accounts? Does Canva do that? Yep. They have a, so when you opt to go on a paid plan with Canva, you can either go a Canva pro account, which would be designed for a, a single user. They also have Canva for teams and that is going to 
enable you to have some control over who has access to what. You can, uh, there's a lot of controls in the brand hub now. That's one of the additional things that actually got upgraded is the the brand branding uh, components. The brand kit allows you to put a lot more stuff into it now than it did uh, a week ago, which is fantastic. But you can set brand controls. You can ensure that your team can only use your brand color palette, that they can only use specific photos. They can't pull photos out of the stock library. You can control the brand fonts. You can uh, set permissions about who can have access to what folders, who can create brand templates versus who can only use brand templates. So you have a lot of control over not only who has access to content, but the le- the permission level that they have access to. And that is definitely an area I need to explore further in terms of understanding all the ins and outs. Uh, I've been asked several times recently to, uh, about offering a course specifically on how to use it with teams. So there's a lot of interest in that. It is definitely set up, though, not only for small teams of, of a couple of people, but also for like full on enterprise level kinds of organizations. There are universities using it. There are large scale businesses with multiple departments using it. So they have got the framework there to support a team and to make sure that what is being generated from that Canva account is consistently on brand and looking the way that the business owner wants it to look. That's huge. That's so important because especially as you start kind of evolving in business, you know, if you're a venue, um, I've thought about like, you know, what if you want to do some sort of swag? What about if you want to do like a, a sweatshirt or a mug or like even small mementos that you give to uh, to the couples that get married at your property? Like really, you want to make sure that your branding is consistent across not only all your platforms, but off of, on everything. Like if someone sees Anything with your logo on it, they should it should feel familiar because it's kind of a similar experience, regardless regardless of if it's in a like uh, one of those little fave icons in the top of the website, yes. or you know regardless of what it is. We've we've talked about brand kits a couple of times. For anyone who's not a designer who doesn't really know what a brand kit is, could you share what a brand kit is and what Canva does to support brand kits on their platform? So your brand kit really in more general terms is also going to include things like your your mission and your vision and your values, your brand personality, your brand, um, you know, the the kinds of words you use and don't use and all these components. But your visual brand branding elements, visual brand kit elements are going to be your logos, uh, your brand color palette, your fonts, your brand graphics, your icons, your, you know, those visual components that you use. And until this most recent update, Canva's brand kit only had three components. It had your logos, your colors, and your fonts. So with this new update, they've added some more ingredients into it. You can now also set more font styles. Before you could only have heading, subheading, and body copy. And now you can have, I think there's nine different settings you can use. If you want to have a particular font uh, formatting for quotes, you can, or captions, you can which is great. And again, that's going to enable teams to ensure that everybody's formatting things consistently in the same way that one caption doesn't look completely different than a caption on a different graphic. Um, But you now also have brand photos in there as an option to actually incorporate in your brand hub, uh, brand graphics and icons as well. And these were things that, I mean, I had a workaround for it. I would, I, my real focus is teaching organization in Canva and understanding how to use folders. Again, very important. If you have a team, you may know where to find something. Your team probably doesn't. Um, so, you know, you could create a custom folder for brand assets and create create that structure to house those materials. But it's really nice now to have them all centralized in a single brand hub so that you can have one place for your team to access all of it rather than having to remember where to go to look for it. So that I think is a real up leveling. It means I have to revamp my entire Canva brand kit course. <laughs> along with every single other course that I have out there. So April's going to be busy. Um, but I think the benefits to business owners are huge. And I'm really glad that they they introduced that in addition to some of these fancy AI kinds of additions. Totally. Brenda, help me understand how you um, partner with people to help them understand Canva better. I mean, you kind of gave us a, a little hint of it just now. Um, you know, you help with, with the organization of the actual platform. But 
you know, I know you have different courses and things out there. If someone's listening to this or watching this and is like, oh gosh, like I love Canva, but I saw maybe I caught part of the, the create or I, or I, I didn't, but I know there's a lot of new functionality and I'm a little overwhelmed. You know, how, how do you help people? How do you, you know, create a better user experience for people? How can people hire you, honestly? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's kind of everything from free uh, resources all the way to hiring me for a VIP day to organize your entire brand, you know, uh, Canva account for you. So if you're looking for free resources or courses or one-to-one -one offers, um, I I have I put together what is called my everything page. It lists everything that I have to offer from free to top offer. And that's just you know, brendacadman.com forward slash everything. And it really has been designed to you know, help those who want to DIY. And if you're using Canva, you're probably DIYing already to some extent. So you may just want to know how to do it better. But there are also those who need a little more handholding, a little more direct guidance in terms of how to use it more efficiently. Uh, and then there's those that just want to offload it all together. Usually the VIP organization days are folks who have a team and their account has gotten out of control and they don't know how to move forward. So I can come in in a day and get it all set up so their team members can actually find things instead of bugging them every time they need to find a particular image. Um, so it really comes down to how are you using the platform and what sort of help do you need? Amazing. What's the, you, you kind of mentioned a range, you said everything from free to kind of more comprehensive stuff. What's, what is, what's that range? It sounds like zero to what's the... To yeah, the courses right now, and this will change in the future potentially, but the courses right now um, are 47 to kind of $97 range. And then uh, the services will start kind of around the 297 up to the, the VIP day is 2,500. It's not because it's not a day. It's a lot of lead up and then 30 days of support afterwards. Oh, totally. I think honestly... Yeah, that's huge. That's really affordable, though. I mean, at, for for anyone, just for like a little bit of context, you know, if we had to hire someone, we've got almost sixty employees now. If we had to hire someone to actually come in and do that for us, train everyone, do some of the lead up and understanding, like it would take, like you said, several days of like prep work and lead up. Then you got to schedule everyone, get everyone in together. I mean, it's not a small thing. So that that pricing seems really, really fair. And I'm probably going to ask you about it more as soon as we hop <laughs> off here. <laughs> well, that's good news for me. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Brenda. I, I want to just thank you for, for coming on the, the show. Before we wrap up, is there uh, anything that we've missed as far as Canva that you feel like people are just going to be really, really excited about that maybe we didn't uh, didn't cover. I mean, I know there's so much, so it's a big question. It's hard, but are there some other things that that you're just like, gosh, if we don't mention this, I'm I'm totally you know missing the mark. <laughs> oh, there's so much new stuff that came out that I'm probably missing a few things. We didn't talk about Translate, which is, you know, they are introducing the ability to translate your content in Canva. I've heard from some folks who said the translations were spot on, and others who said it was a little iffy. So I think it's still learning there. But I, I think it's really important, two things. Don't forget the foundations. These are all great, amazing functionality. But, you know, organization in your brand kit, these these are basics. If you don't have a brand kit, your, your content's not going to look consistently on brand. And it doesn't matter how fancy the picture is that you've done with Magic Eraser and Magic Edit if it's not instantly recognizable as belonging to your brand. And then also, please don't underestimate the power of organization. I am a former professional organizer, so this is a, a, something that's very close to my heart, but I, I know how much easier it is to generate content in Canva if you can actually easily find what you're looking for, what you've created in the past that you can use as a starting point so you're not having to create from scratch every time. If you knew that you had created an onboarding guide for a couple six months ago, and that's the perfect template to be able to duplicate and customize for a new couple that you're working with, you're going to save a lot of time if you know exactly where to go find that so that you can start with that. If you are having to spend hours, you know, scrolling through a mass of designs to find it, that's an absolute waste of time. That's time you could be spending building your business, you know, working on your marketing or just doing something that you actually enjoy. And I think 
folders and organization gets overlooked sometimes because it's not the sexiest part of working in Canva, but I think it's what allows you a really strong foundation to be able to create all that sexy stuff in Canva. And then the other thing I think is really important to understand is there there is so much that you can do in Canva. Please don't let it overwhelm you. You don't have to know how to use every single tool. Just understand what you want to create in it. Find the few tools that you need in there to create it. And over time, you will gradually improve your skills. I think there's a real pressure to understand and use every single bell and whistle that's available to you. And really the power of Canva is, <clears throat> is understanding what to use in order to be most effective with your design. You don't have to use everything. And honestly, if you try to use everything, you're just going to create a hot mess. Yeah, that's that is that resonates so much with me because I think when I first started using Canva, just it was a disaster. And I almost started avoiding it a little bit because I was like, I don't know like where everything is. And so I just, I like, it was kind of uncomfortable, so I didn't do it. So you're, uh, you're spot on. I mean, that organization piece is, is, it just, that resonates with me so much. Um, cool. Brenda, thank you. I really appreciate you spending some time with us today talking about Canva, talking about how you help wedding and event pros and just, just creatives in general. Um, if someone is interested in, in working with you, hiring you, asking you questions, downloading some of those free resources, or maybe even hiring you for a VIP day, where should they go? If they go to brendacadman.com, they'll find all of it. And in particular, uh, brendacadman.com forward slash everything. Uh, and on that page, you should also see a link to my Facebook community. It's called How to Use Canva. And we're getting close to 10,000 people in that group now. So it's a good place to go to ask questions as well if you're just looking for a little bit of inspiration. Amazing. Amazing. And Cadman spelled C-A-D-M-A-N. You got it. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much again for, for coming on the show. This has been an absolute pleasure and I'm looking forward to everyone digging into Canva more and, and reaching out to you as they uh, look to get organized and yes. kind of improve their, improve their Canva skills. Well, thanks for having me. It's been fun. 